U.S. astronaut Neil Armstrong took the historic first step on the moon from Apollo 11's landing craft, the Eagle. His words were heard around the world. The moon landing was seen as the high point of a U.S. space program fueled by a decade-long space race with the Soviet Union. Twelve years earlier, the Soviets launched the first satellite called Sputnik into Earth's orbit. That was followed by cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin and the first manned spaceflight orbiting the Earth. President John F. Kennedy vowed to put a man on the moon by the end of the 1960s. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. Apollo 11's historic mission came eight years later. Armstrong, along with astronauts Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins, entered the Apollo 11 command module atop a Saturn V rocket in preparation for the moon launch on July 16, 1969. Around one million spectators gathered near Cape Canaveral to watch the blastoff. It took the spaceship four days to enter the moon's orbit. On the far side of the moon and out of range of mission control, Eagle separated from the command module. Alarms told the astronauts their guidance system was pointing them toward a crater instead of a flat landing site called the Sea of Tranquility. Neil Armstrong took control, with only 20 seconds of fuel left, coasted to a landing. Six hours later, Armstrong descended the steps and described the landscape. Much of the high desert of uh, the United States. It's uh, different, but it's very pretty out here. President Richard Nixon, hooked up to the astronauts, paid tribute to their achievement. For one priceless moment in the whole history of man, all the people on this earth are truly one. More than 20 hours after their moonwalk, Armstrong and Aldrin fired up the Eagle and rejoined Collins for the flight back home. The astronauts got a hero's welcome. The modern space age had begun with the promise of future voyages to the moon and beyond. Jessica Berman, VOA News.